okay, this should all look a little bit better now because I've invested in a better camera. So hopefully you can notice the difference. Today, I'm going to cover some stall to press exercises. Now, in the past, I've done a tutorial on it in a little bit more detail. Today, I'm just going to cover the main exercises, the exercises I think you should be working on for the, to get that stall to press. So three key ones, really. We need to have that flexibility. So straddle pancake work. We need to get that active flexibility. We need to get that passive flexibility. So passive flexibility is just mainly going to be Jefferson curls for hamstrings and then just doing lots and lots of straddle pancake work. Active flexibility, we're going to be doing leg lifts of some sort. So we've got pike leg lifts, leg lifts where you're keeping the legs straight and you're lifting up and down and just trying to bring the hands forwards, keep the torso forwards and lifting the legs as high as possible. We've got the same version, but you bend the knees first, bring the heels in as close to you as possible and then extend in while trying to lean the torso forwards. So anything like that where you're working active flexibility, things like um, toes to bar, inchworms, straddle inchworms, so stuff where you're compressing. Uh, is really good for you. We need to have a super strong freestanding handstand. So any of the work we do in the handstand strength world, we need to have that strong handstand that we can move around to different positions. And then for a stall to press, we need to have a straddle press to handstand already. So if you don't have a straddle press to handstand, I'd work that as a priority before you start working the stall to press. Obviously the flexibility work is gonna make your uh, make it easier to get the straddle press and it's just gonna carry over to the uh, stall to press. Okay, then we need a straddle L sit. So we can work this on the floor and just go for time. If you don't have the flexibility or the compression um, or the active flexibility to do it on the floor, you can raise your hands up onto something. You can bend your legs as well. So obviously the higher you are, the more you can bend your legs and then you can just lower down slowly the surface that you put your hands on and that's gonna demand more and more active flexibility and more and more straightening of the legs. So probably the number one go-to after you've worked on those components is a eccentric stool to press. Now, to start with, you're probably going to have to elevate the hands, um, but they're going as, as slow as possible and not having any gaps where you're dropping or speeding up. So the slower, more controlled, you can make that full range of motion and slowly decrease in the height until you can do it off the floor for that eccentric. Partial range, I'm a big fan of this exercise. I've been using it for a long time, uh, where we come down for a target. So you come down, partial range, you touch, and then you go back up again. So you can obviously change this uh, throughout the range of motion of the uh, stall to press, um, just making sure that you can go down and back again. You could do like a yo-yo movement where you just go up and down a little bit, or you could go all the way back up to your straight handstands. So they're the main ones. And then I'd also be working different types of entries to your stall to press. So I find it a little bit easier if I do something like a squat into it. So I like use a little bit of a stretch reflex, a little bit of momentum where I go in and back out again. Now, my flexibility is not great in terms of active flexibility through the hips. So my feet always want to drag or touch the floor as I come through. So, but I'm strong, so I've got a strong tuck planche. So another thing that I'd recommend you do work that's gonna help you with the, the bottom section of that stall to press is to have some straight arm planche strength. So I'd definitely be working tuck planches and things like that. So they're the main exercises that I use when I'm programming for somebody else. They're the ones that I used when I got the stall to press. The number one thing for me was flexibility. I already had a bit of strength and I was working on things like handstand push-ups, planche, skin the cat, that type of thing all at the same time while I was working towards the stall to press. And I'm sure all of that had a carryover to help me to get the stall to press. Um, I still need to work some active flexibility range to stop those feet touching the floor as I come through. Uh, but I can always do a stall to press um, just because I have the strength from all the other components. So I highly recommend you work that. Any questions, stick them in the comments below. Thumbs up and subscribe will be appreciated. And I'll speak to you next time. Thanks guys.